I pledge my honor to uphold the objects of Keep Love International, to build my home, school, and community, to serve my nation and God, and to combat all forces which stand and undermine these institutions. Okay, clubs are going to report, or do their club report, so you guys are going to say your, the number of officers, members, faculty advisors, Kiwani's advisors, and division team members in attendance. So please come up here and report on that. So first, um, Aiel. No, you have to come up here. <laughs> okay, wait, so officers, members. Yeah. Okay, IAEA Key Club is present with seven officers, five members, one faculty advisor slash Kiwani's advisor, <laughs> um, and zero div team members. Uh, what else? So. Past events these month, this past month include our monthly Kuakini bar coding with Kuakini Medical. Uh, we had a welcome back card making to welcome the other clubs this school year, and we also attended RTC. Um, upcoming club projects we have: we're going to be volunteering at USS Missouri. We're going to have a welcome back social where we will be discussing our literacy project for this year. We're also going to be doing recycling for the pediatric trauma prevention program thing. Okay. Uh, once again, we have our monthly Kuakini barcoding project. Um, we're also going to volunteer with Children and Youth Day at, on September 30th. We are looking <coughs> to work with the Hawaii Meth Project. And in October, we're going to volunteer with the Susan G. Coleman Race for the Cure. Thank you, Ayo. <laughs> oh. Next is Castle. <laughs> oh, you're coming to this because of the thing. Okay, thanks. Okay, Castle High School is here with three officers and two Kiwani's advisors. For our past projects, we've done open house, a Hui Manu fun fair, and we attended RTC. Um, for upcoming events, we have the graffiti paint out, Puahala fun fair, Kiwani's family dance, USS Missouri, and the newsletter folding like usual. Okay, thank you, Castle. Yeah. Um, next is Farrington. Okay. Farrington is present with two members, two officers, one Kiwani's advisor, one faculty advisor. And our old business, Avalon Arts and Crafts, homecoming banner parade, and we attended RTC. New business, Avalon Arts and Crafts, Kiki Homeless, Avalon again, Children and Youth Day, and Bella Project. Thank you, Farrington. <laughs> uh, next is Iolani. Uh, Iolani is present with two officers, one faculty advisor, one Kiwani's advisor, one Div team member, and eight members. Um, past projects include the Kalihi Union Church. Uh, planning our first general meeting and our school's open house. And a Hui Manu. Manu. Fair. Fair. Okay. Uh, upcoming projects include uh, our upper school open house, uh, Children and Youth Day, uh, Susan G. Coleman, Race for the Cure, and Koho Lave. Okay. Thank you, Ilani. Next is Kaiser. Kaiser is present with five officers, three members, and one faculty advisor. 
Our past event is we attended RTC, we had a sandy beach cleanup just this morning, paper recycling, hoi kai hui, and we had a volleyball social. Our upcoming events are century bike ride, another social, installation banquet, children and youth day, hugs, Krispy Kreme, entertainment books, and haunted house at Aina Haina. Thank you, Kaiser. <laughs> um, next is Leila Lehua. Okay. Huh, um, Marinol. Marinol is present with two officers. Some old business is we attended the Greek festival, the RTC. We had our first returning members meeting and our first board meeting at school. New projects is Project Clean, the Cane Hall Run. Uh, our school's club day, children and youth day, and the Humane Society's pet walk. Thank you, Marino. <laughs> uh, next is Mililani. Okay, um, Mililani is present with two officers and two members. Um, our past projects is helping at the USS Missouri and the Mililani ASO opening day ceremony. Our upcoming projects is refurbishing our school's stadium bleachers and a corp softball field cleanup. Thank you, Mililani. <laughs> um, next is Pearl City. Okay. Um, Punahou. Punahou is present with two officers, one member, one Kiwanis advisor, and one division team member. Our past projects included jams and jellies, helping out at the tank, our interaction with hugs, as well as RTC. Future projects are hugs with our Kiwanis, parent ed fair, children and youth day, Kiwanis family dance, installation banquet, and club day at our school. Thank you, Punahou. Um, next is Roosevelt. So Roosevelt is present with two officers, eight members, one faculty advisor, one Kiwanis advisor, and our past project was Manoa Falls cleanup. Our future projects is the Honolulu Century Riot, the Bank of Hawaii Family Sundays, and the KFT. Thank you, Roosevelt. <laughs> um, next is St. Louis. Are they here? Oh, okay. Oh, nothing. Um, St. Louis is present with five officers and two members. Um, our past well, projects were um, KFD and yeah. Um, <laughs> our, our future projects are going to be the installation banquet, a beach cleanup, and a um, another KFD. So. All right, thank you, St. Louis. Um, come here, Mel. Um, so Kamima is present with um, two, two officers, no members, um, one advisor, one faculty advisor, and one Kiwanis advisor. Um, some of our past events were Ahimanu Fun Fair, Church of the Crossroads, where we feed the homeless, and we did weekly board meetings. Future events that we're going to do are Church of the Crossroads, Cow Cow Wagon, and we're going to be working in conjunction with the city and county, cleaning drains and like um, adopting bus stops, and we're going to fundraise using Halloween grams. All right. Thank you, Kamema. <laughs> oh. And why Paul who? Why Paul who is present with four officers and four members. Our old projects were 
read aloud program at Honowai Elementary, the homecoming parade and RTC. Our upcoming projects are again read aloud program at Honowai, Puhala Marsh, Kane Hall Run, USS Missouri, and Children and Youth Day. All right, thank you, Akalu. Um, now we'll move to old business. So first, Oh, Anne McKinley. This is a new club. Um, McKinley is present with five officers, one faculty member. Our pa past projects is Club Day and Homeless Cakey campaign. And our upcoming projects are Homecoming Banner, Homeless Cakey campaign, and Homecoming Fundraiser. Thank you, McKinley. Okay, now we'll move to old business. So first, the, um, the 2012 Region 18 Training Conference. This year's Region Training Conference was held on August 17 to 18 at the Kalihi Union Church. Thank you to everyone who attended RCC. Hope you all, I hope you all had learned a lot and had a great time. So could some of you that attended RCC share their experience with, with those who did not attend. So, anyone that went to RCC? I'm gonna call names if you guys don't volunteer. Okay, wait, I don't have glasses. Um, Kaylin Tabita. Anything that you, Experience. Um, RTC was actually really fun this year. Um, we made beads in groups, so each bead represented the number of hours that we were um, promising to serve that year. It was actually something that I want to do with my club at um, our membership training. Because that way I can have them set a goal and try and meet it. Great. Thank you, Caitlin. <laughs> Anyone want to volunteer now? Okay, Gina. Yeah. Oh. She left. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Anyone now? Okay. Um, Colin, what did you learn? I know you planned it, but I know you had to learn something new. Um, <clears throat> RTC was really fun, and I learned that we are all pieces of a kaleidoscope that make the world beautiful. <laughs> okay, I guess now we'll move on. Anything else? Okay, now we'll move on to the division project. It's literacy. So Kelly has chosen the 2012 to 2013 division project to be literacy. And we want to encourage parents to read to their children and children to read on their own because a literate person is one who can read and write. Um, projects from holding a literacy night at an elementary school to making book bags to donating to a preschool would fall under the category of the division project literacy. So we encourage everyone to read and do a literacy project. And next, the 2013 Hawaii Convention um, it'll be held on February 15 to 17, 2012 for the 2013 Division 22 Convention. It will be held at Alamon Hotel. So, usually, or well, we always alternate islands. So this year, 
it'll be here so hopefully all of you guys can go the cost is still yet to be determined and this is another another time to attend workshops meet new friends but also reflect on this past year and select a new division 22 lieutenant governor so we encourage all of you to attend convention um, now we'll move on to new business so for new business It'll, we're gonna discuss the possible realignment for Division 22. So does anyone know what it means or what realignment is? Okay, um, Colin will explain it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the, um, there's like <clears throat> district rules where you can only have like a certain amount of clubs within a certain region or district. And we have like 24. <laughs> so um, what they want to do is they want to like split us in half. So they would somehow like draw a line between the states to make like three or two like separate divisions. So the realignment is pretty much like breaking itself into different divisions. It would still be like one region. One region. We would say we region 18, and then we would be like division. So the realignment would pretty much be like separating all of us like we would. Okay, yeah. thanks Colin. Can any of the advisors um, explain why it's, why we're considering realignment? Um, partially because um, the force Calculated out of Hawaii and the um, international is asking us to do so. Um, the other part is the um, burden that it puts on the LPG is quite a lot. Um, the, the feeling. They also want to try and give other opportunities for other students to lead um, in the areas. In, in um, instead of having Kelly taking care of this one, that it would be instead of having Kelly, if you have two LPGs or three LPGs serving the region. Um, all of Hawaii, so you have more opportunities for, to lead in the sense of a higher, um, I guess, governance structure. Um, but in doing so, they would probably get away, um, do away with the island coordinators, because you may not need them, depending on how the islands are separated. Um, so things to keep in mind, like Jess was saying, I think the minimum for international is 12, but the CNH is, by law, say we can have 16, okay? So keep in mind that Oahu has um, what is it? Oh, 15? 17 on Oahu. So if you were to put Oahu by itself, you would already technically have to split again. So you're already looking at at least two or three divisions. So it's something you want to keep in mind too. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chang. Oh, anyone else? Any other advisors? There's also a minimum size for the division. So the two clubs on the Hawaii Island would be too small to be a division by themselves. Okay. Um, one of the one of the biggest um, concerns when we brought this up for discussion a couple years ago was that we got really used to working with each other and just giving somebody from another club a call and say, "Hey, I need five more people." And, and it worked, it worked for a lot of us. And um, because they're very, very uh, conscious about one division not stepping on another division's toes, they kind of make you jump through a few hoops. If you're going to cross divisions, you have to get permission from the division you're crossing into. So all it is is basically you file paperwork with Mrs. Masahara, and she says yes. You do it. So she's not gonna make it hard for you, but it is paperwork that has to be done. But that'll still mean that if you know, if if Oahu gets broken into two pieces and you know Lily wants to call wipe up over for a project, all we need is a piece of paper from both sides. And we email it tomorrow and Ma sends it back to us and boom, Saturday happens. But we gotta think ahead like that. But that's about it. In terms of um, 
RTC, which means Regional Training Conference, same thing, throughout week, all together, all the divisions, all together. In terms of convention, Hawaii convention, we're going to be all together. All we're going to do is bust up the rooms. The, the division, Mauka here, Makai there, and I don't know where. Here. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know whether you go two or three or whatever. But uh, so in, in the things where we all make Ohana, we're still going to be. But day to day, we're going to have to, instead of being accountable to your OIC, you're not going to be accountable to an actual lieutenant governor. And you know, it was a concern, and we talked it over at Kiwanis, you know, just send three kids up to all those meetings five times a year, that's a lot of bucks. And they told us, no, it's, it's, it's well spent. Hawaii's clubs are that good. We can, we can handle three lieutenant governors. So we'll take them at their word. <laughs> so they're gonna send three kids now instead of just the one LTG but three LTGs, okay? So that way it's different. So same but different. Questions? Okay, thank you, Mr. Fujinaka. So now that you guys all know more about what Real Life is, can you guys get into you guys, you guys here on your table, come up with or discuss of what you guys would like, want to have, like you guys want to keep it at how it is now, you guys want two LTGs or three LTGs, so come up with that and why. So we'll take like five minutes and so discuss it. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> well, Thank you. 
about the same as these two. We would have three um, divs, so one on the neighbor islands and then two on Oahu. And we thought that it would be good because it would help Kelly like like have like a workload off of her shoulder, and it would, it would create more roles, like leadership roles for um, other people. Also, it can build up communication skills between like all the clubs and different leadership. Yeah. Thank you. Um, kind of the same with all three, we could split it up into three because it's really a much work by Kelly because she also has schoolwork and she will be giving a lot of her freedom and sleep to do all of this work. Oh yeah, and um, <laughs> I used to live in Vegas and that was like one whole region by itself and it was split up into different divisions and we still had a chance to like communicate with each other and it still worked out and everything like the LTGs communicated with each other and we still saw each other at RTC and regional and yeah it worked out so if you were to split up Hawaii like into divisions I think it would be able to work out and it would give others more leadership opportunities and it would lighten um, Kelly's load. question is because you know this year there would we did not have any candidates you know at the convention for LTG do you feel that if if it's split into three regions three LTGs do you think that you people would be more reluctant to run for LTG being that it's a smaller group because if we have only two candidates or none at all, then we'll have three divisions with no LTGs, right? <laughs> so what are your thoughts on that? Do you think you folks will feel more comfortable and say, I can lead this division? Yeah, I think so, because then <laughs> more, more um, LTGs and more people would be more likely to um, they will have the more, it would be easier for them to run because now they, they won't have to take on as much responsibility. So, so I think that they would be more likely to run. Yeah. Um, I also agree with Vincent. I think it would be, people will be more willing to run because the clubs will get smaller, the division will get smaller, so it's not too much work. And also there's going to be two other LTGs who will be helping you through, like, so it's not like you're doing it by yourself like Kelly, it's you have other people who will help you. Any other thoughts? Okay. Um, I mostly agree with the other points given. I myself, I was contemplating about running for LTG last year, but before even considering my class schedule, I thought, will I be able to actually remember all the clubs on not only Hawaii, but on Oahu in general? And I thought to myself, no. So maybe this will help out, like making the club amount smaller. So it's not such of a 
um, big impact. It's like, oh my god, now I have to learn all of these people's names, all of these clubs, and keep track of all of these projects. But also, it's not only a matter of the club number, but I think it's also leadership skills, like thinking about themselves, will I be able to lead, like lead this club, these clubs to success? Will I be able to run it well? Uh, those of you guys who came last year, 
Uh, she ran a kind of uh, October 1st, the website is supposed to come back up, that's why. So hopefully October 1st, right around that time, you should all be getting, your advisors actually should be getting their password and their login um, for your club. Uh, so what we're trying to shoot for is on that day, you bring your password and your membership list and whatever else, um, and we're gonna try and get you guys all on there, registering your members <coughs> and then creating the invoice. So you can take that back to school, get your check cut out, and then we can all be in for early registration every single one of our Oahu clubs. So, uh, that training side of it, uh, secretaries and presidents will have a computer lab that we can go in there, type in our membership and then get all that stuff done. And then the members and VTs and other officers uh, will have Operation Military Kids in our library um, to kind of help out with a service project uh, at that side. So. So for the monthly submissions, the MRS will be due on Wednesday, October 3rd. So please send it, for the secretary, send it to Kelly, um, call in, region, region advisor, Mrs. Mosibaro, your faculty and humanist advisors, your club president and respected advisor coordinator. And the division newsletter submissions are also due on October 3rd, along with the CD district newsletter submissions. <coughs> and you'll, you'll send it to the same people. Um, okay. Who here has a Facebook? as a means of communication for people. So, well, it's, well, other, some uh, advisors really discourage it, while others like, are okay with it. But um, reasons, there are some reasons that why we wouldn't want to use Facebook for keepups. And well, it's not to me, it's not to say that we, you guys cannot, but it's just that, you guys want to make sure that it's private so that only you guys can see it. So it's because of safety of the covers. If you have a project that posts an information on your club wall, it is out for everyone to see. So this may cause unwanted people to attend the project and make unsafe for key lovers and um, behind the scenes information. So as leaders, um, who plan of club events as well as projects, we don't want you to use Facebook as a means of communication when you at an event. Instead, you should communicate via email or in person, because posting things online could show one organization and we don't want your club or you to be seen as unorganized. And also, um, the behavior that comes along with using Facebook as a means of communication, because, well, think about it, or, uh, Mrs. Kujinok, could you explain it? <laughs> <laughs> You were doing so good, Jensen. <laughs> My example is, okay, you got it too young for it, but you get what I mean. If you go clubbing, there's a certain behavior that goes with it, entirely acceptable if you were clubbing. You can't bring that behavior and act that way in school. That's totally not acceptable. When you're on Facebook as a social network, you act, you talk, you communicate in a certain way, which amongst your peers is appropriate. So if you're doing key club on Facebook, you might forget that it's key club and kind of break into the friend, kind of talk to friend, kind of slip. And that's not a good way to represent key club. So it's better if you have your own website where it's only private to your club. And the, the big deal too is just, Facebook is out there for almost everybody to see, and it, it's it because part of your digital tattoo. And so, if you do stuff in your personal life that's your business, but then you still do Key Club there, then Key Club gets that mark too. And we want to keep the digital tattoo of Key Club on our four basic values, right? Leadership. What are the other three? What's the big one? Caring. Caring. The I word. Inclusiveness. Inclusiveness and? Character yeah, building. Yeah, and character building. Oh. Okay, or turn around my phone, let's read your shirt. Okay, so 
Do you guys get it? And that's the reason why it's discouraged. Um, that it's social. It's you guys. Cool. Talk that way. It's all good. But don't. If you put keep up in there, bad association. That's that's the only reason.